An absolutely classic related rates problem. An oil rig springs a leak in calm seas and the oil spreads in a circular patch around the rig. If the radius of the oil patch increases at a rate of 30 meters per hour, how fast is the area of the patch increasing when the patch is a radius of 100 meters? So as you can see, I'm just starting by sketching a little picture. I'm going to put a square here and call that our rig. I know that the radius is 100 meters and this guy it's growing in all directions. That radius is getting bigger, going out every which way. And it's doing that at a rate of 30 meters per hour. Okay, so I've identified my key concept, or my key uh, quantities here. I've drawn a little sketch of a picture. And what's gonna be a good next step to put everything in nice mathematical formalism is to label everything with a symbol. So I'm gonna call the radius R and the rate of change of the radius in classic calculus fashion, I'll call that bad boy R prime. Now, I can figure out the area, but the real question here is what is A prime when R is 100 and R prime is 30? This is the whole question. This is exactly what we need to answer to solve this. So two variables are changing simultaneously, the radius of the circle and its area. We know that the key relationship between the radius and area is A equals pi r squared. It helps to rewrite this basic relationship showing explicitly which quantities vary with time. In this case, we'll write A and R as A of t and R of t to emphasize that they both change with respect to t, the time variable. The general expression relating the radius and the area at any time t is a of t equals pi r of t squared. So, looking at this, the next step, and this is a good next step to do, is to pause real quick, make your life easy. Draw a big table, get organized. So I have two quantities, and I'm going to split this into two times as many quantities as I have. All right, I've got r. So, looking up here, I know the value of r. I know the value of r prime. I can figure out the value of a using our formula. And what I need to find is a prime. So looking at this, I can solve. And what I'm gonna do here, because I don't know the specific time that I observed this, is I'm just gonna use a variable big T to denote the time of our observation. So r of big T is 100 meters. A of big T, just using the formula, pi times 100 meters squared, well, that is 1,000 pi meters squared. Okay, so 1,000 pi meters squared. Good stuff. And now, I already know what r prime of big T is. At the moment of observation, I had a increase to the radius, a rate of increase of 30 meters per hour. And what I need to find is a prime of big T. Okay, a prime of big T is our goal. How will we do it? We'll just differentiate the formula we have right there. 
So going on down, let's just rewrite what we got. Let's put the same thing on both sides, a of t, putting it in parentheses. On the other side, I'm putting pi times r of t, that whole thing squared. And I'm just going to put primes on both sides. I'm going to derive them both. OK, let's proceed with the calculation. So on the left hand side, things are easy. A prime of t. On the right hand side, I got to be a little careful because this is a chain rule situation. Yeah, a little bit of chain rule right there. So I'll get 2 pi r of t, r prime of t. All right. Now, looking back up at our chart, we can deal with this when we have plug in big T for little t, i.e. at the moment of our observation. So just take our chart, fill everything right on in. Okay, I'm going to zoom out, get ourselves a little bit better room here. But there we go. So I got 2 pi, that's sticking around. R of big T, that's 100 meters. And R prime of T is just 30 meters per hour. Okay, so multiply it all on through. 2 times 30 is 60, 60 times 100 is 6,000. So 6,000 pi meters squared per hour. And there we go. The last thing we need to do is just write our answer. And this is always what we should do. We should write our answer in plain old English and really state what we've just shown. So we may conclude that when the radius of the patch is 100 meters, the area is increasing at a rate of 6,000 pi meters squared per hour. And box that bad boy up, you're done. That's all it took. All right, have a great day. Okay, we're back again with another great related rates problem. Here we've got a, two small planes approaching an airport, one flying due west at 120 miles per hour and the other flying due north at 150 miles per hour. Assuming they fly at the same constant elevation, how fast is the distance between the planes changing when the westbound plane is 180 miles from the airport and the northbound plane is 225 miles from the airport? So as you can see, what I'm doing right now is a quick little sketch of the situation, drawing some pretty bad planes here. Um, I'm marking out the distances and I'm marking out their directions. And now I'm gonna roll on through and I'm gonna label everything. So the westbound plane is traveling at 120 miles per hour towards that airport. The northbound plane at 150 miles per hour. The westbound plane is 180 miles away, and the northbound plane is 225 miles away. This is just a rough sketch, though, guys. All right. Now, next step, we're going to take this rough sketch, and we're going to turn it into a lot cleaner of a diagram. So what we really got here is we got a triangle. You know, we got two planes going towards the airport, and the distance between them is the hypotenuse of that triangle. Let's call x and y and z the distances between the planes and the airport and each other, respectively. So I'll draw a quick table here. I have three quantities, so I'm going to make six cells in my table. I'll label x, put that down, that's 180. y, put that down, that's 225. z, here I need to use the Pythagorean theorem. x squared plus y squared equals z squared. And using a little bit of algebra, I get that z is the square root of 180 squared plus 225 squared. I'll just leave it like that for now. Next column, all the primes, the derivatives. So key thing here, x negative x prime is negative 180 and y prime is negative, or sorry, negative 120 and negative 150 because these guys are getting closer to the airport. It's decreasing. We need to find z prime. So Let's take our relationship, x squared plus y squared equals z squared. Let's differentiate both sides. 2xx prime plus 2yy prime, using a little bit of the good old fashioned chain rule, equals 2zz prime. All right, cool, cool. Now we just plug in values using our chart. 2 times 180 times minus 120 plus 2 times 225 times minus 150 equals 2 times uh, let's see. Oh, oh, messed up here. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, that's messy. All right. 
square root of 180 squared plus 225 squared. There we go, z prime. All right, now we can solve this for z prime. z prime is equal to 2 times 180 times minus 120 plus 2 times 225 times minus 150 all over and oh god okay here clean there we go all over 2 times the square root of 180 squared plus 225 squared and bam if we punch that in a calculator that is approximately minus 192 all right so there we go we got ourselves an answer z prime approximately minus 192 and all of these primes are negative. All these derivatives are negative because the distance is decreasing. They're getting closer to each other. So last step, wrap it up. Let's write our answer. When the westbound plane is 180 miles from the airport and the northbound plane is 225 miles from the airport, the rate, the or the distance between the two planes is decreasing at a rate of approximately 192 miles per hour. Box it up, you're done. Wow, that, that pair of CRJs just landed on the opposite end of the runway. Gang warfare confirmed. All right, what up everybody? Back to another related rates problem. So today we got the classic sand pile example. Here we got sand falling from an overhead bin accumulating in a conical pile with a radius that's always three times its height. If the sand falls from the bin at a rate of 120 feet cubed per minute, cubic feet per minute, how fast is the height of the sand pile changing when the pile is 10 feet high? So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to make a rough sketch. I'm just going to make a little quick sketch of the situation, get a sense of exactly what's going on. So to start it off, I drew a little bin with some sand falling from it. Now I'm drawing a little cone. Okay, all right, fair enough, fair enough. So I'm gonna mark that radius there. Uh, let's see if I can get that better. All right, and now I'm gonna flip to a different color, keep it all legible, mark the height. Okay, so we can label all these things. Let's call the height H, a classic, a classic name for height. And then we got the radius R, all right, cool. And naturally, we got the volume, V. So, the thing to keep track of here is that all these guys are related. We've got our rough sketch down. I'm going to box that up. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about how these quantities work. So, we know that the volume of a cone is one-third pi r squared h. And if you didn't remember that, you can always look it up. I don't know. That's just one of those ones. Yeah. You might want to remember, and uh, oh, here, I think I'm uh, marking the wrong thing. The radius is always three times the height. Let me, here, let me get rid of those. So R is equal to 3H. We know that. All right. So popping that in that volume formula, one-third pi times 3H squared times H, because the radius is three times the height, we can pretty easily just expand this out, do a little bit of algebraic manipulation, and... Uh, make this a more manageable formula with only one variable on the right hand side of that equation i.e. we'll get 3 pi h cubed is the volume okay so 3 pi h cubed that's the volume both these guys are changing with time we're just not marking that down right now because we don't, we don't need all the time variables flying around making everything messy let's differentiate so v pi prime is 3 pi 3 h squared h prime that's a little bit of the old uh, chain rule in action. We know that V prime is going to be 120 because that's how fast the sand's falling. And naturally, if that's how much sand's falling, that's how fast the volume's increasing. So I'm going to put 120 for V prime, 3 pi, 
3 times, okay, we need to get the value of h, scrolling back up to that problem, that's uh, 10 feet. So the height is 10 feet at the moment of observation. We throw that on in there, 10 squared. We got that h prime. That's the only thing left. Let's just solve for it. So h prime, 120 divided by 3 times pi times 3 times 10 squared, i.e. 900 pi. And that is approximately something in the neighborhood of 0.042-ish. All right, so let's end everything. The longest and most time-consuming part of it is just writing out the answer. So at the instant when the height of the pile is precisely 10 feet, we're going to know that the rate of change in the height i.e. how fast that height is increasing as we dump sand on this pile is just about 0 0.042 feet cubed per minute. So I'm just writing that out here. It just takes a little bit to write all this down, but you know, it's what every good answer should have, a clear conclusion. All right, box that bad boy up. Bam, you're done. おめでとう。おめでとう。おめでとう。おめでとう。おめでとう。おめでとう。おめでとう。おめでとう。おめでとう。おめでとう。おめでとう。おめでとう。おめでとう。おめでとう。おめでとう。おめでとう。おめでと